So Tanya had a plastic lid to a storage bin that said SCS shelter property on it. So I have to guess that at some point she left the 100 night shelter and began to stay at the elusive SCS Cheshire County shelter. And quite possibly she met with the SCS coordinator and applied for one of these programs like the Shelter Plus program or the Rapid Rehousing program where they gave her rental vouchers for an indefinite amount of time that could be cashed in at the Swampside Inn also known as the Coach House Motel and I guess that she stayed at the Coach House Motel due to the fact that she was camping out directly behind the place and also at her campsite was located several bottles of dish soap and cleaning supplies so people who stay in a shelter do not usually buy several bottles of cleaning supplies that they will have to carry around with them however at the coach house motel there are small kitchens in most of the cabins I believe and as long as you stay there you are responsible for cleaning your own place or not as you could see with some of the units but Tanya did have all of these cleaning supplies out there in the woods behind the coach house motel so I believe she had rented a place there and bought a bunch of cleaning products to make sure her place was clean she had made it through many hard months living at the shelters and I'm guessing got referred to the coach house motel through one of the SCS programs she took responsibility for her substance abuse issue and through it all she kept her job at Friendly's restaurant and when she found out she was pregnant I doubt that she would put her living arrangements in jeopardy by making stupid decisions so based on all of that I guess she was doing pretty well so my questions would be what exactly happened that she'll wind up in the woods behind the coach house motel apparently homeless again and why does she leave her stuff out there and last was she alone or was Brad with her so let's talk about some of the other things that were found at Tanya's campsite the first was a home pregnancy test that read negative it's a VERI that's a very quick early pregnancy test from Greenbrier International Incorporated the next are three cards there was a business card from the pub restaurant at 131 Winchester Street in Keene New Hampshire and the name on it is Kimberly A Ianu spelled I O A N N O U and it says she is president M E J B at the pub incorporated second was a sim card that has a chip that you snap out of it and install on your phone since the chip is still in the credit card it looks like it is unused the third is a gift certificate from the local bookstore in Keene, New Hampshire called the Toadstool Bookshops. So I called the 800 number on the back of the card for the balance information and found that there's a $10 balance left on the card. And to tell you a little story about this Toadstool Bookstore, I went there in August of 2015 to look for a map for Cheshire County New Hampshire and the closest thing they had to that was a large New Hampshire state road atlas that shows all the largest highways and roads in the whole state of New Hampshire but I wanted a map of all the roads in the county and they said they did not have one so I asked them to order one for me and they told me they would see if they could do that and for me to leave my phone number so they could call me back so I got a call the next day and the manager of Toad Stool Bookstore 
said that they cannot order maps anymore because no one makes anything like that. So a few months earlier in Connecticut, I bought a New Haven County map book from a regular bookstore. And being in Connecticut, they had map books for most of the counties in Connecticut. So this is the map book that I got, and it is made by American Map, by the Kappa Map Group. And it appears that they make maps for the entire United States, and not just certain states, obviously. But that will show you the type of insane people you will deal with in places like Keene, New Hampshire. From Tyler McGrath at the community shelter to the local Toadstool bookstore. These people all act crazy, almost as if they are in concert with each other and go out of their way to make things impossible for some people. Tanya also had two joke signs. One said, which parking only? All others will be towed. And the other, no parking, broom lane. Now normally, if I saw someone who had these signs around, I wouldn't think anything about it other than it was a joke. Because real witches who practice witchcraft and Satanism are all part of the pedophile community and are terrified of anyone finding out what they are. So they would not usually get something like that that would tell everybody what they are. And that is why these high-level satanic cults or witchcraft covens always hide behind symbols such as religious symbols and a few others like the tree or the owl or the spiral or the triangle. So I think that maybe Tanya's boyfriend got those signs for her as a joke if she got too many parking tickets, for example. However, also found with her paperwork was two paychecks from Taco Bell with the address of 255 Washington Street in Claremont, New Hampshire. And these checks were made out to a Darren Potter. Not a Harry Potter, but a Darren Potter. And both of these checks were endorsed by Darren Potter. And then underneath his signature, they were also endorsed by Tanya. So it looked like he signed them over to her. And then she tried to cast them at her bank. But she was unable to for one reason or another. One check is dated August 15 of 2014. And it's for $111. And the other August 22 of 2014 for $100. So she had these checks. But could not cast them for one reason or another. Yet decided to hold on to them. All the way until May or June of 2015. So Darren Potter is an interesting name. And that, along with the witch parking only signs, makes me wonder if Tanya wasn't being programmed along the white witchcraft or Harry Potter line. And if she were being programmed like this, the Central Intelligence Agency was attempting to convince her that she may be feeling strange or witnessing some strange people around her due to the fact that she was being introduced to the world of witchcraft and was also being turned into a witch. And the Central Intelligence Agency would use triggers from movies like Harry Potter so Tanya would make associations between what was happening in her life with that fantasy movie. And this is a program that the Central Intelligence Agency will use on naive and well-meaning people to first get these kids to believe that witchcraft is something cool or benevolent, and second, get these kids to eventually take direction from and follow these cult member handlers 
into a dangerous situation where she would wind up being killed by the establishment pedophile witches. And this whole process is all part of their rituals to program kids and slowly manipulate them until they are sacrificed or more accurately killed in terrible ways. So I don't know. Maybe Tanya liked reading and would often go to the Toadstool bookstore and buy Harry Potter books or books on witchcraft. And she also bought these joke signs that say witch parking and broom lane only. But the two checks with the name Darren Potter on them suggest to me that Tanya was being manipulated by the system. And this guy Darren Potter was part of the CIA's manipulation and programming of Tanya because they knew that she could be triggered along the Harry Potter line. And what is strange is that people with an interest in witchcraft who wind up homeless behind the Army Reserve Center and Coach House Motel seem to be a reoccurring theme.